So since everyone swears that they have the new magic way or the magic pill or method to be able to increase testosterone, I think it's only fair that I make this video. Today we're gonna be ranking the top 10 most common methods that guys use to increase their testosterone levels. I'm gonna rank them from S tier to F tier. Everything is gonna be ranked based on practicality, science, and the ability to move the needle for your testosterone long term. I'm not gonna go in any particular order, but I will explain each one of these in detail and then tell you the exact tier that it deserves. Okay, first one, sleep. Sleep is something that everybody overlooks because quite frankly, getting high quality sleep with modern society is pretty challenging for most people, I'd say. I mean, it was challenging for me, so I understand. But did you know that one week of bad sleep can lower your testosterone by 10 to 15%? That's a pretty nasty drop from just being inconsistent with your sleep. And that's only just one week. But on the contrary to that, if you go from five hours a night to eight hours a night, studies have shown a 20 to 30% increase in total testosterone production. Why, you may be asking? Well, 70% of your testosterone is produced in deep and REM sleep. That's when your growth hormone is gonna spike, that's when your cortisol is gonna drop, and that's when testosterone is gonna get produced. So quite frankly, you can't fix low testosterone if you're running on fumes and no sleep. It's impossible. And I've yet to find it, but I haven't seen a supplement that replaces high quality sleep because I'm not recommending steroids to any of you guys. This is all natural. So sleep deserves S tier. All right, next, let's hit some of the trendy stuff, the supplements. So we got Tonkat Ali, Fidogia Agrestis, She Legit, Ashwagandha, all of these supplements you probably heard about like TikTok or something, right? And I've heard countless claims saying that these are gonna double your testosterone overnight. All right, is it true? I don't know, let's find out. Now, for some of these, there actually is real science backing up an increase in testosterone. Maybe not a doubling overnight, but it'll definitely do something for you. Now, what will it do? For each of the supplements that I mentioned, some studies have shown anywhere from 100 to 200 nanogram per deciliter increase in your total testosterone. But those are all with subjects who already had optimized sleep training and diet. So it means that if your foundation sucks, these probably aren't gonna do anything for you. It's like polishing a car with no engine. It makes you feel like you're doing something productive temporarily, but like your car can't go anywhere because you don't have an engine. The same thing that if your body has a terrible foundation for diet, sleep, and training, these supplements are really gonna do nothing for you. Cause I'd make you feel like you're doing something productive. But I will still give them B tier because if you are in the optimal category of doing the right things for yourself already, these will put you up a little bit higher. So it goes in the B tier category. All right, number three, I wanna talk about intermittent fasting. People love it, I love it. It's a very extreme practice depending on who you're talking to. But the deal is that testosterone is not gonna get increased when you just start fasting. What it does is indirectly help other mechanisms in your body that could potentially increase your testosterone level. It helps you lose body fat, it helps improve insulin sensitivity, and when you have lower fat, it means you have less aromatase, which is gonna be converting the testosterone you already have into estrogen, making you have lower testosterone, which is something you don't want. But if you are already lean and you aggressively go into these fasts, it's probably gonna hurt you more than it's gonna help you when it comes to increasing your testosterone levels. Because being at such a low body fat percentage typically signals cortisol to pump up because your body's in like a catabolic state and it goes fight or flight, cortisol is gonna shoot up and that's gonna mess with your testosterone levels. So fasting is good depending on the scenario, but it's not the magic pill for testosterone. So for that reason, we're throwing that in the C category. Number four, we're gonna be talking about cold exposure. Whether it's ice baths, ice showers, regardless, cold exposure in general. What does it do for the body? Does it help with testosterone levels? And this is another trendy thing that I've used myself and I quite enjoy it. I think it's very beneficial for a lot of mental benefits. And I've also noticed some positive testosterone benefits. What did I notice? Well, I noticed this. Within a few weeks, and this is my anecdotal experience of doing ice baths, I noticed my testosterone go up a few hundred points. So take that for what it's worth. That was really the only variable that I changed for myself. That's anecdotally, right? But I believe, based on the science, the reason that it had this effect was because of the effect that it had on my testicles, right? Because testicular function depends a lot on the temperature that it's constantly operating within. And I just made a video talking about why your balls need to be a lower temperature. So if you haven't watched that, go watch that video. But it's the fact that you have compressed underwear. You have toxins, maybe xenoestrogens leaking into your balls. They're very hot. This is not optimal for the signaling to produce testosterone to your balls. So cooling down your environment can really help 
produce more testosterone levels. But because it still kind of is in the mainstream and there's not a ton of evidence, just a little bit, supporting the fact that it will potentially help with testosterone boosting, I'm gonna have to put it in like the B category. This next one, number five, is gonna be massive. Let's talk about body fat percentage. If you're carrying too much fat, the testosterone that you already have will be much more likely to convert into estrogen. And the reason for that is of an enzyme that I just mentioned, aromatase. That's why high body fat guys always feel slow, sluggish, and tired, because they have a chemical imbalance. What I've seen with myself and with my clients and also in the science, between 10 to 15% body fat seems to be the sweet spot for hormone production for most people. It's low enough to maximize estrogen to be positive in your life, but it's not too low to where estrogen starts to be non-existent and then you have no libido and you have you know brain fog, you have low energy and you're sluggish. So body fat percentage, that's going in S tier. Next up, we got sunlight and vitamin D exposure. So we got way too many vampires in this like comment section. In the past videos, I've had many guys talk to me about how they get, they're gonna get vitamin D exposure and how they're gonna get sunlight if they live in a cloudy place. I want you to understand that vitamin D exposure is so crucial for testosterone production because vitamin D kind of acts like a steroid in your body. Although it's classified as a vitamin, it's pretty much a steroid. And low vitamin D3 is gonna equal lower testosterone levels. The research is extremely clear when it comes to vitamin D and the congruence to higher testosterone levels. With men who have optimal vitamin D levels, typically they have 20 to 25% higher testosterone levels than men who don't. And not to mention, for all of you guys who are complaining and saying it's hard to get your vitamin D, it's one of the easiest things you can get because just because there's clouds in the sky or you live in a place that has minimal sun exposure and you're thinking of the sun that you see on like a beach, the sun is always there. It's just not present the way that you wanna see it. It's going through the clouds. You might just have to be outside a bit longer. If you can't go outside for 40 to 60 minutes a day and get sun exposure and do that, then what you should do is take a vitamin D3, K2, omega-3 MCT oil supplement, preferably a liquid and around 5,000 IUs to 10,000 IUs, somewhere in that sweet spot, depending on how depleted you actually are of vitamin D3. Because if you're already on the higher side, then don't do that. If you're very low, 5,000 to 10,000 could benefit you a lot. And it's not an instant fix for your testosterone, but it's gonna multiply over time and compound very well. So for that reason, and all the reasons that I just mentioned, vitamin D, we're gonna throw that in the A tier category. All right, so number seven is one that mainstream media tells you to not get a lot of because you're gonna die of heart disease. And there's a lot of controversy around it, but it's cholesterol. And I want you guys to understand, cholesterol isn't the enemy, okay? It's quite literally the opposite. It's a foundation to be able to build testosterone. Now the way this mechanism works, your Leydig cells take the cholesterol and it converts it into pregnenolone. The pregnenolone then converts into testosterone. So when you go on a low fat diet, cutting out eggs, butter, milk of these sorts, unless you're on testosterone or taking steroids, you can't get away with that. Not gonna have a building block to be able to produce natural levels of testosterone. It just won't happen. Studies have shown that men who have higher testosterone have higher cholesterol diets. And when I say higher cholesterol diets, I mean you can't just be eating McDonald's and fast food because then you're gonna be getting really high levels of LDL cholesterol. And you don't want LDL cholesterol to be very high. You want your HDL cholesterol to be a bit higher. And then you wanna have a good ratio of all of those, the HDL and the LDL, and you want your triglycerides to be in check. But those are gonna be and you're not gonna have high testosterone if you eat cholesterol that's shit, okay? So just focus on getting cholesterol from eggs. That's the easiest thing you could do right now. But cholesterol is 100% going in the S tier category because without it as a natural, natural lifter, you're not gonna be able to produce testosterone. Okay, number eight, let's talk about zinc and magnesium, something that most of you are deficient in and a big problem as to why you potentially have low testosterone and feel like shit. So simply put, zinc and magnesium are essential for testosterone production. You will have a very tough time producing regulating and synthesizing testosterone if you do not have the right amounts of zinc and magnesium. I know this from personal experience. So besides the science backing this up, I'll give you my own anecdotal experience. 100% factual. As soon as I started taking zinc and magnesium, my testosterone levels went up. Now a way you can tell if you're deficient is if your diet is full of processed foods and low in meat, eggs, and dairy, you're probably deficient. 
If you fix these, you could probably get a 10 to 20% boost based on what the literature says. So we're gonna throw zinc and magnesium in the A tier category. It's not quite S tier, but it's very important. Now I'm sure most of you have been waiting for me to talk about training. So this is what we're gonna get into now for number nine, resistance training. Now I think most people, if they have half a brain, can agree with me on the fact that resistance training is pretty essential for a man to be able to produce the right amount of testosterone. And the literature, thankfully, supports this substantially. Heavy compound lifts increase testosterone, increase growth hormone, and it increases your androgen receptor density. And that's important, the androgen receptor density part. Because not only are you making more testosterone, when you're more dense in your androgens, you get to utilize the testosterone far better. That's why lifting doesn't just make you stronger, it also changes how you carry yourself because you're changing not just hormonally, but chemically and neurologically as you lift and progress. So training, 100% is going in the S tier category. Now this is one I think that a lot of you guys are gonna be interested to hear about, just because it's so like mainstream and you've heard probably so many people talk about this type of stuff. But we're gonna talk about, for number 10, testosterone boosters. Now this is the stuff that everybody wishes was a magic pill and worked wonders, but in reality, does absolutely nothing. You've seen ads for this, for sure. Testosterone boosters, 300% overnight. And every single study on these testosterone boosters shows nothing. If anything, it's all pretty much placebo. Whether it's DAA, fenugreek, whatever, I don't care. They're all doing nothing. So please, just don't fall for the gimmicks. Do the other nine things that I mentioned in this video. Disregard doing this, okay? This is going in the F tier category. You're better off just saving your money, okay? So there it is. The 10 most common methods that people use to boost testosterone rank from S tier to F tier. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're ready to apply this stuff in totality and you want my full tracking systems and templates and different guides to be able to maximize your testosterone, you can go click on the link in the description and join my school community where I give you all that information. And if you wanna see exactly how society in more detail is castrating you and making you weak, then watch this next video that's on screen right now.